in Erlang and Elixir, or in other Beam languages, processes are very inexpensive things. They don't take a lot of memory, they don't take a lot of resources, and they're expected to die or to exit. You have may have heard the slogan, let it crash from the Erlang and Elixir world, and that's true. What you can do is you can allow an Erlang process to crash if something goes wrong and let something else handle it. So first of all, we should say that there's sort of three main ways a process can exit. First method for process exit is the process simply runs out of things to do. This is called the normal exit. So if you tell it, I don't know, run a process of, you know, if, you, if your process is simply, you know, spawn time or sleep with parameter of a thousand, it'll sleep for a thousand seconds and then it'll not have anything else to do, so it'll just exit. It can also crash where, I don't know, you divide by zero or, you know, there's a bad match or a pattern matching error, things like that. Maybe you open a file that isn't there, boom, process crashes. And finally, you can kill a process. Killing a process is use the uh, kill process exit thing would basically something external to the process kills it that one we're not going to worry about too much because generally if something's killing it chances are it's not something you're going to be worried about the fourth option actually is i should mention is also that the piece of hardware it's running on could go away so if your server dies it catches on fire or somebody unplugs it or something mm -hmm. then you know all the processes go on it will simply go away and be done so how do you deal with this well the beam provides two main mechanisms you have link and you have monitor and you can find primitives link and monitor, but if you're creating a new process, you should actually use spawn link and spawn monitor, because if you do spawn then link or spawn then monitor, you have a potential race condition, in that if the process dies before you call the link or monitor, um, it could be bad. So spawn link and spawn monitor are atomic. The difference is link is bidirectional, so if you, you link two processes and either of them die, they'll both die monitoring is unidirectional. If you want to simply say, okay, I've spawned a bunch of processes and let me know if they die, use monitor. Link is also useful for other things if you trap exits. We'll focus on monitor for this one. If you, if you monitor a process, what happens is if it exits or when it exits, you get a message just like any other message and it looks like this. Add them down, uh, the PID, and then the reason it died. So if it exited normally, the reason will be the atom normal. If it exited abnormally, it'll be a reason. And then you can then deal with that in some appropriate way. Maybe you want to alert something else that it didn't, it failed. Uh, maybe you want to restart the process. You can do anything you want. This is basically how a supervisor works internally, more or less, with some external stuff too. So this is you can then outsource from your main process all of your error checking. And the real place this shines is that fourth case I mentioned earlier where the hardware fails. If somebody, if, you know, you're running on a server and that server crashes, uh, and I mean physically crashes, be it you know, somebody unplugged it or the server got hit by lightning or the power supply caught on fire or any of those hardware-y type failures that, you know, can and will happen from time to time, this lets you deal with that. You can have the best type system in the world that prevent all software bugs but it can't prevent somebody unplugging the server or you know the server power supply filling up with dust and catching on fire or whatever other kind of hardware failures you can imagine. That's why we, we do monitors in Erlang and Elixir. They allow us to check for that kind of error where the process has died because of something that's totally external to the process, which could include hardware failure. I hope that was useful. If, if it was, please subscribe and thumbs up this video. You can also uh, follow me on Twitter at Zeke Hessen. Thanks very much and happy, uh, happy Elixir, happy coding.